in this short film, we're going to travel down the River Brule Neb from its source up on the slopes of South Brule to the mouth in Peel. We're going to look at the changes in the physical and human landscape as we head down the river. Manx rivers are typically flashy in their response to a rain event due to the impermeable slate underneath. Let's start by going into South Brule Plantation to see the effect that the trees have on the river. Upland areas in the west of the British Isles collect a higher than average rainfall total due to the relief of the land. The first section of human interference the river reaches is South Brule Plantation at an altitude of 350 metres. The trees have an impact on the river in numerous ways. Looking up to the canopy, it is clear that a great deal of precipitation will be intercepted before it reaches the ground. This will reduce the water entering the river with the plantation covering over two square kilometres. Here we are in the upper section where there's a band of impermeable slate which is harder to erode than the surrounding rocks. This has produced our first physical feature which is a waterfall. We also have large angular slate which is yet to be eroded and is typically flat due to the cleavages. Lower down the river there is a channelised section which has been constructed to divert the water to Struenbrule Reservoir to supply the homes of Upper Foxdale. The reservoir was last operational in 1991. Below the reservoir we have this culvert which narrows the river's channel, increasing the velocity which causes erosion on either bank. The stream is then diverted around the A road, although numerous works have been needed to repair the wall which has been undercut from erosion on the outside of the meander. After the flooding in the 1980s of Foxdale near the primary school, the River Brule needed works to prevent further erosion and the undermining of new developments, which are still progressing today with the new housing estate. More development leads to more impermeable surfaces, which can increase the risk of flooding. Foxdale Primary School, the first thing that is evident is the colour of the water. This has come from the flooded Foxdale mines due to oxidised iron and lead content. This not only affects the colour of the water, but also causes pollution in the area. Water joining the river, which hasn't passed through the mines, is markedly cleaner. Gabion baskets, which are wire baskets filled with stones, have been placed on the river banks to prevent lateral erosion and the undermining of nearby developments. Film of Foxdale, taken in 1920, shows the huge piles of spore material from the mines, highlighting the intensely industrial nature of the area. As we head out of the middle section, the valley starts to broaden and on the edge of St John's near the Arboretum, a meander can be found. This meander has all the classic textbook properties of a river feature, including the river beach on the inside due to the slower velocities and a river cliff on the outside due to the faster water. Also, it's worth noting that the bed load now is more rounded and smaller due to attrition and the colour from Foxdale Mines is now gone. Downstream, one of the old uprights from the Foxdale Railway can still be seen, and below it, the river widens where a ford has been constructed to allow occasional vehicles across.
The confluence of the larger river Neb, joining with the Brule, occurs west from St John's. Just down from the confluence, some water has been diverted to supply a fish farm. This water then re-enters the river downstream. During its journey along the central valley towards Peel, the river only drops 30 metres over a distance of 5 kilometres, giving a very gradual gradient, leading to more lateral erosion. Here at the Raggett we have a rock ramp which has been constructed to replace the old weir which has eroded away. They put in foxtail granite which is a harder type of rock. Upstream it's had the effect of ponding back the water creating deeper section of the river. The channel on the far side has been lowered as a method of soft engineering, allowing the water to flood amongst the vegetation in times of high flow rather than over the footpath and the recreational area. Glenfaber Mill is no longer operational, but it used to be supplied with water from the weirs, which used to be near the ragget. The old railway line, which runs alongside the mill, is now a recreational footpath called the Heritage Trail. Weirs are artificial waterfalls which are designed to pond back water behind them. They also have the additional benefit of aerating the water for aquatic life. In this instance we have a sluice gate which is designed to divert water down to Peel Power Station which we'll see downstream. Peel Oil Fired Power Station uses water from the river in the process of producing electricity. This water is then returned to the river at a slightly higher temperature, which can impact adversely on oxygen levels and affect aquatic life. This final channelised section of the river has been artificially widened. This is to allow a greater volume of water to prevent flooding from the nearby power station. Finally, at the mouth of the river, we have alluvium mixed in with small stones which has been ground down through attrition by the river. The Peel Harbour Retention Scheme, built in 2004, now controls the water from the river and traps sediment upstream in the harbour. There will be a constant requirement to dredge the silt brought down by the river to maintain the area for boats. And finally, the River Neb enters the Irish Sea to the east of St Patrick's Isle, completing its 13-kilometre journey from source to mouth.